uh, Chama Vets Polish, Dzień uh, Dobra. Good morning to you all. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much for the invitation to be here. It's my great honor. Um, so few weeks after Poland was actually. Um, can I have Yeah. Have you got the, the free floating mic? Please. It'd be easier. Dziękuję. Uh, can you hear? Is that better? So, uh, just to say, a uh, uh, very few weeks after Poland, Daria PL was uh, accepted into Daria. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, however, um, I'm, I'm here today to um, give more information about Daria, hopefully. I won't talk about much about digital humanities. I think you're all pretty much experts in that, in that particular realm, what, it, what they are, what they do. But I want to talk about what Daria is and, and does, uh, about how we what we, where we come from, what we're doing at the moment, and hopefully what we want to do in the future. So, um, I'll just uh, a brief overview. So, Daria is, is an idea, uh, and uh, that's a very, it's a very important to remember that to, we also have to look at the intangible things, not just build tools and create services, but keep the ideas alive. The history of Daria, as I've just explained. I want to go into a little bit about Daria as an organisation, how we're constituted, how we operate so you can understand who you come to and who you have to engage with. Um, projects and partnerships we have at the moment. Our successes, we do have a few successes, uh, but also our challenges, both as uh, humanists working in the digital field uh, and as Daria as an organisation. And then a little taster of perhaps uh, a direction we could take in Daria for the future. Um, so, um, what I find quite funny is uh, I've been here just about two months uh, as CEO of Daria EU, and my predecessor, Sally Chambers, who's now gone to Ghent, uh, still gets the question, what is Daria anyway? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big organisation. When I, I've been here for three weeks only, I went to Munich for my first conference, I met one of the national coordinators, and he asked me very kindly, how's it going? I must have looked a bit nervous. Uh, and I said, it's, it's going quite well. Um, and they looked at me with a twinkling eye and said, but isn't Daria huge? And it is. It's a big, complex organisation. But one of the most important things to remember is, as Sally puts it here, is not so much um, what is Daria, or what Daria does for you, if you want, but how do you want to constitute Daria? Because it's very important to remember, Daria is for researchers and by researchers. However, there's also a different meaning of Daria. Uh, Jakob Epler, who's our communications officer, he has relations to from Iran. And apparently Daria is, to him, was always a girl's name. And it means uh, hold firm the good in Persian, apparently. So uh, just whenever you think about Daria and have doubts about what it might mean, just think what we ever produce, what we create together, our collaborations, we're holding firm the good of our advancements. So Daria's idea, as I said, uh, by researchers and for researchers, it's very much constituted as something which is decentralised and bottom up. Um, we, we have to constantly remember this, I think, recall this, because Daria is still in the middle, if you like, of a revolution. The digital humanities have been going for 40, 50, by some estimations, 60 years, if you want, but essentially we're still understanding what it we're doing. We're still helping along something which is quite full of innovation. What's also important to stress is that it's about an, a, a, an advanced and enhanced concept of infrastructure. It's not about the pipes or the hardware, the bandwidth, the servers and so forth. It's about information, methodologies, and most of all, it's about people and communities. Because tools may become old, uh, they may become redundant, but if communities remain and are vital and are interested, they will create replacement tools. So communities are very, very important. Um, there's also an aspect of a deep liaison with cultural heritage domain. Libraries, well, I'll start with the galleries, libraries, archives and museums, the so-called glams, which I'll talk about later on. They've held and still hold much of the content which is of interest to digital humanists. And this was an important aspect from the very beginning of what Daria was about. We're an open developing research environment, and most importantly, we're an architecture of participation. That means uh, across borders, across disciplines within the humanities, uh, and most of all, if you like, uh, given the emphasis the EU places on the impacts of the humanities, the impacts of digital humanists, uh, how can we create inclusive, innovative and reflective societies all together? 
How do we bring the public in? How do we involve them? How do we become meaningful to the broader society? Diary has gone through a lot of phases. We've had the preparatory phase. We've had the transition phase. We're now in, a lot of talk about later, in the construction phase. So many phases, so many different facets of Daria. But from last year, from November last, or from August rather last year, November was the launch, which we'll go on to, Daria became something called an ERIC. And ERIC is a European Research Infrastructure Consortium. We're no longer a project. People keep saying to me, oh, isn't Daria a project? Well, not really. We were based as a project, as, as a kind of project, a series of projects for a number of years. But we're now a uh, constituted infrastructure for the humanities established for a period of 20 years. So we're here for the duration, if you like, of seeing this revolution through, if you, if you want. So, yes, 15th of August, 2014, and I think as well, I don't, uh, I don't know where I get this from, but I think 15th of August is also um, the celebration of, of the liberation of Korea from Japanese imperial rule. So, uh, it's not, we share it with other people this day, but uh, it's an important uh, moment for Daria be constituted in this way. As you can see from the smiles and the, the applause, a lot of work had gone into this when it was finally launched in November last year. There are three uh, board uh, members of, of our board of directors, Laurent Ormovit, Rubis Blanca and Connie Crystal. They've put in a tremendous amount of work. As people will know, I think um, Daria was born really from a, a, a conversation between Sheila Anderson of KCL in, in the UK and Laurent Ormovit and a few others in 2004. So he's looking very kind of modest there, but Laurent has been very, very instrumental in this. As I said, er and being an Eric is, is quite a, a different, uh, con you know, different um, condition, if you want, or circumstance from being simply a, a project. Um, we're actually, in terms of the constitution, we're equivalent to a nation state. We have that kind of status. Um, and these are my interpretations of what it means to be an Eric now, to give people an idea of what our purpose is. We really are there, if you want, to make sure we can funnel intelligence about the community, we can funnel resources from the EU to where they can have the best and most concentrated impact for the digital campus community. We had 15 uh, founding members, all there, in, in, the, in a great variety across the whole of Europe. Uh, as I say, I'm very pleased to say we have two new members, both in Poland and Portugal, uh, came to Daria just a few weeks ago. And what I was especially pleased about, pleased about when, when Poland and Portugal both presented to Daria, the General Assembly, was both said, we want to give to Daria. Now, of course, the other members want to give to Daria as well. That, that shows you exactly how much Daria is seen as an active community of people bringing to, things to it. And I'm really very gratified to hear that. So Daria is an organisation. Um, as I said before, we're quite a complex organisation. A few years ago, as Daria, we were mostly um, based in Göttingen, in Germany. There were just two or three people. Uh, we're now six, we're soon to be seven. We're going to be employing a technical officer to help with one of the projects I'll talk about later called Humanities at Scale. Um, we're based in the Centre Mar Block in Berlin, Göttingen, as I said, and Dance in, in The Hague. Uh, we've got a wonderful, we have the three C's we call them. There's a CIO who, who is responsible for integrating the contributions, the in-kind contributions, which I'll describe later on. It's very, very important. The chief aspect of our outputs across the whole of, of, of Daria in our various nation states, various members, tools, software, and so forth, that are created as part of the national roadmaps in Daria. There's the C, CO, uh, who's, the, who's responsible for governance and projects, two people in, based in Berlin. And there's a CEO, Chief Executive Officer, that's uh, me and my colleague Jakob Epler, I mentioned, who deals with communication. Um, now, I always say these days, as my little joke, I'm the chief encouragement officer. I'm, I'm, I'm not able, really, to, to deal with being a chief executive officer. I'm too modest for that sort of thing. And here we are. We're, we're, we're real people. We have uh, real lives. We're um, um, trying to build a new infrastructure uh, for the governance and support of Daria across three sides. Uh, we're a fairly new team. Uh, everybody here, apart from, from Hank in the middle there, is, has only been employed since last November. Uh, Jakob, uh, he's been employed since May, and since November, Marco in March, uh, and me in September. So we're still, we're still uh, getting to grips with what we have to do, 
with your help we'll get there. Dare is, as I said, quite a complex organisation. It's built around uh, top, down and bottom up um, set of relationships. The General Assembly at the top there, as you'll see, that really oversees um, the constitution of Daria, how we're run, and it has input directly from the member states, the member members of Daria. They uh, are very um, uh, strong in, the, in, in their views of how we should be developing. They're collectively working together to influence how Daria proceeds. We have the board of directors, it sits in the middle of all this, really. And at the bottom, most importantly, we have the national coordinators who help take the outputs from the national roadmaps in terms of how people want to develop the national scale in conjunction with the research, joint research committee to oversee the outputs. Um, they also oversee, there should be a further section here, which is, I'll talk about in a moment, the working groups which are below the joint research committee at the bottom right hand there. They are now the powerhouse of Daria. On the um, left hand side there, on my left hand side anyway, there's the scientific board. Uh, that's a completely independent body which oversees the content, the substance of what we're trying to achieve for the research community. So they oversee uh, the direction we go in, what, what we should be looking to, to build in terms of uh, new methodologies, especially new ways of looking at research, not just the tools and services as such. And there we also have, uh, on, the, on the further margin, DARA EU, the coordination office, the six people I just mentioned. We also have uh, something called the VCCs, and they're the Virtual Competency Centres. We have four of them. They cover a wide range of activity in DARA. Um, they're attached to the working groups, as I say. The working groups are led by those in the VCCs. Um, they're a chief aspect of, of working within the network of DARA for our member states, um, our members. Um, we're focused a lot at the moment on education research, uh, education liaison. It's a very important aspect of what we do, teaching the next, next generation of humanists how to be digital humanists, if you want. As I say, the working groups are newly constituted, uh, newly arrived as a major factor in what we do. There are 15 in total that are attached to the VCCs. Um, and they are the chief means by which people coming into Daria, members, observers, and cooperating partners, their, their, their inroad into Daria, their opportunity in Daria, is to create a working group to directly influence what we do, where we go, what we produce, how we produce it, with whom it's produced across the whole of Europe. There's a very broad spectrum of what we do in those working groups. Here's just a very small selection. It goes from the more traditional aspects of digital humanities around its resources and digital adaptation to the more intangible things around community engagement and in, in impact, how do you measure the impact, the influence of what we do on, on the uh, disciplines we work with and on the broader society. So going back to the question of what, what does Daria mean anyway? If you join Daria, what, what difference does it make to me? Um, these are just some of the things that uh, I think are quite important for the researcher. Uh, just speaking to a, to a colleague who's going to be speaking later, and um, it, it's a question sometimes of different disciplines, different communities wanting to work at the European level, wanting to break through to that European level. And that's what you can do if you join Dari. The researcher belonging to a national organisation can have that inroad, have that opportunity to work with colleagues across, across Europe. You can publicise your activities through Daria, you can find, find colleagues in Daria, you can explore the network in Daria. You can have a voice as a researcher, as a humanist, in, you know, in terms of the European Commission, making sure that what we do as humanists is, is important and known about by the Commission. And it's especially true at the moment, it's pretty important because we don't know about Poland so much, uh, but in the UK, it's sort of a spending review, um, and uh, humanities are being cut. Um, that's happening across the board as well in the world. In Japan in September, they had a massive cut in the funding of humanities. So having a voice at the highest levels in Europe is extremely important at the moment, I think. Diary is not only a matrix of governance and checks and balances and committees and so forth, it's also a network of services. Some of these will be familiar to you. Uh, Calendar is, a, is based in France. It's a way of, uh, of uh, noting and broadcasting your scholarly events around digital humanities. Uh, I, I would re recommend and encourage you to go along to Calendar and make sure that events in Poland, in Poland uh, to do with digital humanities are registered there so people across Europe can understand what you're doing better. 
we have uh, training materials, we hold summer schools to bring, to bring practically people together, to create some of those uh, avenues of knowledge transfer, those intangible things about networking which are most important to, communi to the community. Next two slides will uh, demonstrate or show two services which have directly come, however, from not from associated partners or affiliated partners or partners with whom we work, um, who are commissioned by to create services, but directly from the working groups. <coughs> Both of these from the BCC2 around uh, education. Here we have a Digital Matters course registry. It's still existing. It, you can go along to it again. If there are Digital Matters courses that you want to have registered here, please do so. Please make sure we can have a big, a great, um, comprehensive picture across Europe of what's, what's available for students who may have an interest in digital humanities but can't, can't quite articulate that to themselves. They can discover where they can go to learn about this type of programming, work with certain type of content, where, that can be, where that's possible to do. Again, we focus on teaching. We have Daria Teach, which is actually funded by Erasmus Plus, but again coordinated by one of our BCCs. And that's looking at uh, a total curriculum for, for digital humanities across Europe. At the moment, we're very aware, I think, of digital humanities that to be competent in the digital humanities, you have to have a number of <coughs> skills, uh, varying skills, which can't be supplied by any one institution, any one department. And so we're working, for example, uh, with, with Argus and Göttingen uh, to see whether students can go along to both institutions and get a more comprehensive description to their subject by going to both universities and by following uh, a single curriculum. So some projects and partners, some of these will be very familiar to you, Sandari, for example, uh, Charisma, Airy. These are all mentioned in the application we've ever made uh, to Daria. These are all uh, partners that you're going to be working with anyway, you have liaison with. We also have uh, new, new, new uh, uh, projects, uh, sorry, new pa partnerships. Pathnos is a very interesting uh, initiative. It's, uh, if you like, a, a meta um, uh, a research infrastructure. It's taking the inputs from ourselves, from Clarin and other projects like the area as well, and making sure that they are distributed and dis disseminated across Europe as effectively as possible. It's um, some of the activities around around, uh, around Parthenos to do with interoperability. It's more, it's more to do with actually the, if you want the, the, the pipes and the, the hardware I mentioned before. It's also to do about semantics, standardization. Uh, those sort of services would mean we can link our individual roadmap outputs to a broader community in Europe. And we'll be uh, actually receiving some of the services from, from, from Parthenos, we'll be distributing them and making sure we can link them to our various communities uh, to encourage interoperability, because after all, without interoperability, a lot of our desire to work collaboratively can't come into being. Another project is Humanities at Scale, um, that's been funded by Age 2020. Uh, Humanities at Scale is, if you like, a mini diary, if you want. Uh, we're, we're working on expanding, especially diary communities. We're looking at uh, regional centres. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, heading Work Package 3, which is about exactly that. We're looking at knowledge transfer east to west, west to east, north to south, south to north, um, across our different communities, and building regional centres of excellence. We're still looking for some link third parts to that. So if you want to go along to the website and look uh, at the details of the Humanities at Scale project, we're having a kickoff meeting in The Hague in, in January. And if you want to talk to me about, about past being uh, involved in you know, Humanities at Scale, uh, I'm happy to put your, your name forward. Let's say we want to expand the existing community to all scholars in the, in the humanities and arts, not just those who are initially self-motivated to do things digitally, but to make sure everybody else is also aware of what humanities are doing in the digital realm. We want to integrate scholarly communities more effectively, build more services, more closely aligned to what researchers are doing, and foster research infrastructure developments and interdisciplinary collaboration. Here's some of the work packages, as I say, the work package three, growing diarrhea, um, training education again emphasized here, uh, and open, open data methods. We heard about um, uh, the importance of doing things in the spirit of open science making sure that's inculcated across the board. Another important project for us is, as I mentioned before, about the content of galleries, libraries, archives and museums. We're working with Europeana, that you all know about. 
how to make sure that we don't just see format shifting in galleries, libraries, archives and museums, taking analog content and simply digitising it, how can we make sure that these digital objects are really capable of being, capable of being interrogated by digital human, humanists? How can we draw data about their use as well from, from the actual uh, object itself, the way it's accessed by, by users and so forth? Um, and if you have yourselves any particular liaisons, any regional networks of working with galleries, libraries, archives and museums, uh, since I'm responsible for writing a report on this by next March, I should be very pleased to hear about your examples if you've got any at all. Please see me during the break and afterwards. Some successes of Daria. Along with the, um, uh, the funding for Humanity at Scale, in 2014-15 alone we received direct funding of 30 million. Again, it's the Eric effect if you want. Many of the calls the European Union puts out are specifically directed at the Eric infrastructures, at the research infrastructures, and we are successful in going to those bids and getting the money for them, and distributing the money and making things happen. It's not just about the money, but money helps, let's say, to make things happen. The in-kind contributions from our national members, uh, there's such an impetus to share to make sure that people know about what's happening at the national scale across Europe, that we exceeded our target by, by threefold in 2015. As I mentioned, we have the DCO, the, uh, the uh, Diary Coordination Office, the six and maybe seven people soon completed uh, which is very important for our central administration. And again, to refer to some of those intangible aspects of, which make things happen between researchers, between communities, it's about having a trusted network, but having mutual recognition of what we do, some of the intangible things we need to embed in our societies. And we're starting for 20 years, the same here for the long term. But challenges. Um, these are some my brief um, views about challenges to humanists, if you want. I used to be a historian. Uh, I've got a fair idea what hu hu you know, being a humanist means. Um, I think we have to make sure we have humanist scholars. The humanities as such will always carry on. We'll always have people who will um, write poetry, will think about their historical identity, about their culture and so forth. But how do we make sure we have the humanist scholars who have expertise in these areas? We need to connect more to the digital citizen, I think. We have people who are digitally competent, who work beyond the academy, beyond the university. They're helping with humanitarian relief efforts. They're interrogating data, they're using data. We need to connect to these people. If we don't do it now, at this juncture in history, when will we do it? We need also to have a better idea of how we can get impact for our researchers who are doing things other than creating articles and writing scholarly books. Um, it's interesting, it's ironical that you can create software that software may be reused, uh, but you don't get evaluation for that software. I think the National Endowment for Humanities in the States recently published a, a tool called DEPSI, which enables that very thing. How can you say, I've worked 150 human hours on this piece of software, tell your professor, actually, it's had these distinct impacts across the community. Uh, that's an important for, thing for, for us to do as humanists. We have to humanize the digital, we'll not just be led by uh, the fact we have an internet of things, that we have fridges that are networked, toasters that are networked, but how do we help citizens position themselves in a society which is dominated by data? And, and relevant, let's say, how do we make sense to funders and the, and the broader public? We must not be inward looking, we must be outward looking. Challenges to Daria, uh, we've got uh, lots of outputs, as I said, 50 million euros worth of them, how to make them more visible, it's very important for us. Uh, impact and reuse, how do we measure that across our communities? One of those ways, one of the ways of doing that is to have a diary a seal of approval. We often have a, a set of national roadmaps. People want to do certain things according to the parameters on the ground. We have EU level um, initiatives about broad society. How do we align those things? One way is to have a diary a seal of approval for outputs so we can say um, we don't interfere with what we want to do at the national level but we make sure for this particular theme, this particular initiative in the EU, we can identify exactly what's important and relevant at that period of time and to let a seal of approval on it. We need to have, we don't have a strategic plan, we don't have an operational plan at the moment, it's my responsibility coming in to do that so we can take ourselves to the end of this particular phase, the construction phase, and be successful at 2019. And as I said before, public engagement are beyond crowdsourcing. How do we enable ordinary people who are interested 
That's the spirit of the digital humanities. It's open to everybody. You can get all of data, you can use data. How do you go beyond crowdsourcing, using the public as simply tools if you want, to make them co-researchers. And vision for the future. Well, as I mentioned before, so many phases. We have the construction phase. Uh, now it's five years, um, 2014. I'm responsible for helping that construction phase along. 2019, we have operational phase. The third step is sustainability. How do we do that if the funding dries up? How do we make sure we're relevant to people? How can we produce services which can be used beyond the community to help sustain us? And I think one of the ways we can do that possibly is, as I say, to concentrate on the idea of an academy without walls. Uh, we can turn people who are used to using Facebook and so forth, not turn them, encourage them if they want, um, from being digital consumers to being digital makers and co-researchers, as I mentioned. And Dara, in the end, can, I think, can see itself as, if you want, an NGO as a foundation for being a trusted intermediary in this kind of situation. Imagine um, academic departments that go out and help people learn how to hack data, learn how to live in the smart cities, their connected cities, which will be even more the case in 10 or 15, 20 years' time. That's the sort of environment in which Daria, as an NGO, as a foundation, could operate. And those are my acknowledgements. Thank you to those people who have kindly helped me with this presentation and given me some backing since I started in Daria. And if you have any questions, I can take them now or later on. Thank you very much. Thank you.